Welcome to 2004 and welcome to the Barclays Premier League. This is the Premier League table in 2004. Some insane teams in here that are no longer in the Premier League. And these are the biggest signings of the 2004 transfer window. Damien Duff moves from Chelsea to Juventus. 22 million is the biggest summer signing of the entire window. Sydney Gavu goes to Manchester City for 19 million. Laurent the fullback and Invincible goes from Marcel to Barcelona for 14.6 million. Fabregas as a teenager moves from Arsenal to Juve for 11.4 million and we're going to simulate this all the way through to 2024 to just see how different world football would be oh my god Messi's moves oh my god Messi's moves no way Barcelona to Roma 7 million that is unbelievable Lionel Messi is gone from Barcelona just like that okay this simulation is already insane we've already done this on FIFA 23 but now we're doing it on FIFA 24 a brand new save a brand new timeline let's see how it goes before we continue let's have a look at the teams this is the Arsenal team in 04-05, just off the back of an invincible season. Absolutely insane. Henri up front, Reyes on the wing, Vieira in CDM, Sol Campbell, Colo Torre and Lehman in nets. Aston Villa are here as well. Gareth Barry just doing his thing. Pesky is up front for Birmingham City, as well as David Dunn in the midfield. What a guy. Blackburn have Brad Friedel in goals. They have Robbie Savage holding it down. Morgan Gantz, Pedersen as well. Bolton of Diouf up front. JJ Akocha in midfield. Jaska Line in the net. Charlton as well. Paul Koncheski at fullback. What a guy. Chelsea, Robin, Drogba and Cole. What a front three that is. Lampard Michelele in midfield. Of course, this was Jose Mourinho's first season at Chelsea where he dominated the Premier League, only conceding like 16 or 18 goals, something like that insane. Everton, Tony Hibbert at fullback. Let's go. Tim Cahill at Scam there as well. Darren Bent, Leon Osman, Kevin Kilban. Damn, that's a decent Everton team. Bullum have Silvino, Van der Sar in net. Small Bronk on the wing. And this is the Liverpool team. John Anarita playing left mid. Xabi Alonso and Gerrard in midfield. This was the Istanbul year that they won the Champions League. Milan Barros up front, Sami Hippia, Jamie Carragher, and Jersey Dudek in net. And Manchester City, Robbie Fowler on the wing for them, Nicholas Anelka, Sean White Phillips there as well. Is that Joey Barton playing Cam? Oh my god, that's a completely different era. Steve McManaman playing behind them, David Dunn, the own goal merchant, Sylvan Dissan and James in net. And then Man United, definitely the best team so far. Keen goals, Ronaldo Giggs, Van Nistelrooy Rooney is just insane. Even in defence, Ferdinand and Neville and Howard, Sylvester, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an insane team. Burrs, Robbie Keane, and Jermaine Defoe, come on. More Irish representation. Oh, they also have Carrick in midfield. Dawson in defense. Wow. West Brom Canu up front. Black Country. And there we go. That's the entire Premier League. But let's have a look around some of the bigger teams around Europe. First of all, let's go to PSG and see how they're faring. They have Pauletta up front. Cisse on the wing. It's not exactly the same team that they have now. Not exactly Kylian Mbappe and stuff, but they're still pretty good. With regards to Germany and Dortmund, they have Kohler up front with Rosicki playing Cam. They've got called Cringe playing midfield, which is very funny. Weidenfeller and Nets and Everton as well. But this is the Bayern Munich team, and it's very, very strong. Makai and Pizarro up front. Michael Ball Black is there, Owen Hargreaves, also Lucio, Sanyol, Oliver Kahn in net. This is Schalke back when they were good at football, Asamoa on the wing, Poulsen playing in the centre midfield. And Italy, this is the Inter Milan team, Vieri and Adriano up front, that is a pairing. Veron on one side, Stankovic on the other, Edgar David there in CDM with Cambiasso. What a team this Inter Milan team is. Juventus, Ibrahimovic, Del Piero, Camerineschi, Nedved, Buffon in nets as well, Zambrotta at fullback, it's an insane Juve team. The Lazio team, do I know any of these guys? I don't think so. Oh, De Canio. I know De Canio at Cam. And this is the Real Madrid Galacticos team. Ronaldo, Raul, Figo, Zidane, Beckham, and Guti in midfield there as well for some reason. Roberto Carlos at fullback as well. Casillas in nets. It's an insanely good Real Madrid team. Stupidly talented. Maybe they can win the Champions League this year. There's so many teams that could do it. Let's go to May and see who's in the Champions League semi-finals. Okay, here's the Champions League standings. Chelsea, Liverpool, Benfica, Real Madrid. So there is a chance that Liverpool get back to the Champions League final and win it. Benfica are there though, which is interesting. But I really want to check out Real Madrid because they're just so strong. Let's see how they're doing. And here's Real Madrid. R9 Ronaldo, 34 and 8 on the season. Zidane, 27 and 16. What a year for him. David Beckham doing really well as well off the wing. Figo not doing too badly off the other side either. Of course, this Real Madrid team is insane. In La Liga, they're definitely top. Five points clear of Barcelona. Can they get ahead of Benfica? Can they close out the tie? A 4-1 win overall. Who are they going to have in the finals? Going to be Chelsea. Chelsea knockout Liverpool. going to be Real Madrid versus Chelsea. That's a complete turn up for the books. And this is the Chelsea team Real Madrid will be playing against. Scott Park is there in midfield. That's insane. But let's see if they can do it. Real Madrid versus Chelsea. And it's going to be Real Madrid. Roberto Carlos scores and Owen does as well. Michael Owen comes off the bench and gets a goal. Subbed on for R9 Ronaldo and does the business. That's insane. Real Madrid 2, Chelsea nil. So in real life, Liverpool won in Istanbul. But in this simulation, it's going to be Real Madrid taking the 2004-05 Champions League trophy. Another transfer window has come and gone. Top signing. Xabi Alonso from Liverpool to Arsenal. 47 million. That's massive money in the 05-06 
season. Raquel made to Chelsea, 27 million as well. Lucio goes from Bayern Munich to Inter Milan. Very appropriate is an Inter Milan legend after all for 24 million. Philip Lam moves away from the Bundesliga. He goes to Monaco at a young age, 23 million. Alex, the cam. Oh God, I don't even know who this is. Gone to Real Madrid anyway. Fabio Grosso, World Cup winner, goes to Manchester United for 12 million. Of course, he's a World Cup winner in real life. But in this simulation, 2006 hasn't happened yet. It's about to happen at the end of this year. So we'll see if he can win the World Cup once again. Thiago Mata goes to Leverkusen, 11 million. Luis Schau for 11 million as well. Robert Pires moves away from Arsenal to Inter Milan, 10 million. Paolo Wanchop to Aston Villa. Here we go. Cap de Villa goes to PSG as well. To Lalonde, to Monaco. David Dunn to Manchester City. That was a flurry. That was an absolute flurry of transfers. Okay, let's go to the Ballon d'Or this year and see who can scoop it. 2005 Ballon d'Or. Here are the nominees. It's going to be Totti, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho and Raul. Three oars and Francesco Totti's in there as well. To be honest, I think this is a two-horse race between Ronaldo and Ronaldinho. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I definitely think it's going to be one of those two. Let's see who can scoop the Ballon d'Or in 2005. The winner is going to be Ronaldo. There you go. R9 is a Ballon d'Or winner. Of course, he won it in real life, but he's going to win it once again in this simulation. I'm waiting for the Messi and Ronaldo dominance to begin. I wonder if it will, and I wonder when it does, who can maybe skip Ballon d'Ors in between them, because I don't think they'll win like however many in a row that they did. The dominance in real life, I don't even know if a video game can replicate that. And if you thought summer was weird, uh, let's make this a bit weirder. Andrea Pirlo has gone to Man United, and uh, Ryan Giggs has gone to Real Madrid. This is the 2004 simulation. This is the crazy stuff that happens. Pirlo is now a Man United legend. Fergie wanted him, and now he's got him. Ryan Giggs has gone to go and play with David Beckham, I guess. I, 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 don't, I don't really know. Patrice Evra has gone as well, except he's not gone to Man United. He's gone to La Coruña. And Sergio Ramos from Sevilla, not to Real Madrid. Oh no, he's gone to Bayern Munich instead. Nedved, the Ballon d'Or winner from Juve to Manchester United as well. Man United just not caring about FFP. Colaccini has gone to Man City, but more importantly, Chiellini also gone to Bayern Munich to go and play with Sergio Ramos. That's insane. Eric Abidal gone to Arsenal as well. Gary Neville leaves Man United for Roma. Oh my God, to go and play with Messi. So now he's played with both Ronaldo and Messi. And that's January. Let's go to May now and see where we're at. 2006 Champions League. Who's doing well? Before we check the Champions League, leave a like on this video if you want me to see me do a Youth Academy run in 2004. This is the Champions League. Arsenal-Barcelona, which is actually the 2006 Champions League final, but it's the semi-final this time. And Manchester United versus Borussia Dortmund. Okay, let's go and visit Arsenal. Let's see how they're doing after the Invincible run this time around. And this is the Arsenal team. They've picked up Michael Essien to play in midfield. Henri is still balling out in front. Van Persie's on the bench. And also Xabi Alonso. I imagine he's starting. Robinho. Oh my God, Robinho's here. That's so funny. Okay, they have Robinho for some reason. Eric Abidal can play right back, I suppose. This is a really, really strong team. They also have Yap Stam. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and they're second in the Premier League with three games to go. Liverpool are currently top and they're also losing their tie against Barcelona. Can they claw it back somehow? No, they can't. They get smashed by Barcelona. We should probably go and check on next. Yeah, this team is ridiculous. <laughs> this is so not fair. Oh my God. Ronaldinho 92 as well. Eto Iniesta. Yeah, just ridiculous. They have three world-class centre-backs, but none of them can play CDM. They really need a CDM. Oh, actually, they can play Marquez there. Okay, that works. Never mind. Bojan here, 15 years old, 47 rated. Jesus. And yeah, Barcelona dominating La Liga this season. And they also have Real Madrid to play against, which we may as well sim out. Barcelona versus Real Madrid and El Clasico, but it's 2006. Can Barcelona win? 2-1 win. Xavi and Ronaldinho both get goals. They're looking set for this Champions League final. But who are they going to be against? It's going to be Dortmund. Okay, so Manchester United get knocked out as well. Barcelona versus Dortmund in the Champions League final seems so odd. Here we go. Barcelona versus Dortmund. This Dortmund team is actually pretty decent and it could upset Barcelona. But come on, you have to expect Barcelona to win. And they do. 2-1. Deco and Puyol with the goals. Barcelona win the Champions League in 2006. Just like real life. They beat Arsenal in the final then. They beat Dortmund in the final this time. But actually, kind of realistic from FIFA there. But we do have a World Cup to look at. So let's see how that goes. And this is a story of the 2006 World Cup. Remember, most of the teams that finish third place do actually go through. Because it's only six groups because FIFA's stupid. Anyway, Portugal finishes third. And it does get enough points to go through. Japan and Ukraine also go through. Ukraine top their group. US, Ireland and the Netherlands. Brazil crash out really early. That's not like them at all. Netherlands scraping through, but Ireland actually get a win. I think we beat Brazil. France top their group at seven points. Uruguay just behind them. Switzerland following them up. Germany and Italy get through their group. No surprises there. Spain and Denmark get through as well. It's England and Argentina also cruise through group F. England nine points. In the round of 16, Japan beat Uruguay. Oh wow. Germany knock out the Netherlands. The US knock out Portugal. Ronaldo in tears. England knock out Ireland. Got it. Argentina progress beating Denmark on penalties. Same with France and Spain both winning. Italy, the eventual World Cup winners in real life, knocked out in the round of 16. That is poor. Quarterfinals, though. England beat Argentina and France knock out Spain. Germany progress, and so do the US, making it the whole way to the semi-finals before eventually falling to Germany. And France beat England, leaving a Germany-France final. Third place comes to England, and the World Cup winner is France. A 2-0 win for the French. They lost in the final in 
in real life, but this time around, Zinedine Zidane clinches his second World Cup in 2006 after 1998. Most expensive transfer is D'Alessandro for 27 million to Roma. Alex to Monaco, Mascherano also to Monaco. Rafa Marquez makes a big move to Manchester United. So does Sagnol. They've shored up their back line for the future. Julie for Inter Milan, 19.5 million as well. Nemanja Vidic moves from Sampdoria, but not to Man United. They've already bought a centre back, so he goes to Fulham instead, alongside Lissandro Lopez. Andre Arshavin joins Atletico Madrid. Maxwell to Real Madrid. Oh my goodness. Gareth Barry moves to the sunny shores of Valencia. Lucas Podolski goes to Udinese. Martin Demichelis leaves for Parma from Bayern Munich. Parma were very good at this time, so yeah, they'll have a lot of money and they'll definitely be good coming to the end of the simulation. Craig Bellamy leaves Celtic and goes to Munchen Gladbach. That's a bit of a weird one. Scott Parker to Middlesbrough. I can see that happening. Laurent leaves Barcelona, goes back to Arsenal. What a legend. Paul Robinson joins Gareth Barry playing for Valencia. That is so funny. Darren Fletcher and Luis Garcia both becoming teammates for PSG. Klasian Huntelaar leaves for Celtic. Steve Finnan joins Manchester City. John O'Shea joins Spurs. And that is the insane transfer window done. The summer transfer window has come and gone. Let's do Ballon d'Or once again and see who's over winning it. The 06 Ballon d'Or votes are in. Eto, Shevchenko, Ronaldinho and Thierry Henry. One of those four. Henry never won a Ballon d'Or in real life. Can he win one in this simulation? It's a little consolation. I understand that. But hey, it counts for something. Can Henry make up for his previous Ballon d'Or failures? No. It's Ronaldinho with the Ballon d'Or. No surprises there. He's going to win a few Ballon d'Ors, I think. Biggest deals of January. Yaya Torre moves to Spurs. Thiago goes to Chelsea. And Fabregas joins Manchester United, moving again back to the Premier League. Just like real life, he doesn't go to Chelsea this time. Goes to Man United. Gerard Piquet leaves Inter Milan for Arsenal. Varane leaves Inter Milan for PSG. They got the money in. Roberto Carlos, one of the first Galacticos to leave. He joins AC Milan for 10 million. Cannavaro leaves Barcelona for Inter for 9.5. Aidan McGee, the Irish legend. He joins Bolton, the poor guy. Now he has to live in Bolton, unironically. Mesut Ozil leaves Ross Vice Essen. I'm not quite sure what club that is, but he joins Morantes for 1.25 million. That seems like a pretty good transfer from Morantes. Freddie Guari joins Fulham as well. The man with a right foot so strong. It's it's just insane. Champions League. Marseille, Lyon, Inter Milan, Real Madrid. Oh my God, that is weird. I don't even know what the Marseille and Lyon teams look like, but I do want to check out Inter because they've had some movement in the transfer window. And this is what the team looks like. Adriano's still here. 90 overall. The man's a machine. Vieri is still up top as well, despite being kind of old now. 33. Dankovic on one wing and Karagunis on the other. Davids and Cambiasso. The goggles, man. What a legend. Lucio in defense alongside Cannavaro. That is so strong. And Zanetti, of course, ever present at fullback. They also have Ashley Young for some reason. Don't ask me why. And Obafemi Martins. Yeah, okay, cool. They also signed Rudy Julia and Robert Perez. I, 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 it just seems a bit random, to be honest, especially when they don't play with wingers. Why would they sign wingers? Like Stankovic and Karagoulis are both like cams. They're not wingers per se. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they're in a Champions League semi-final, so I don't really have a space to talk. They did beat Real Madrid in the first leg. Can they convert this further? Get to a final. Yes, they can. 4-2 on aggregate. They progress and it's going to be Marseille in a Champions League final. An all blue affair heading into 2007. Of course, in 07, the Champions League winners were AC Milan against Liverpool. But this time around, it's going to be Marseille versus Inter Milan. And here we go. 2007 Champions League final. Marseille versus Inter Milan. And it's going to be Marseille. That is a real surprise. Zenden with a brace. Don't know who that is, but he's a Champions League final winner. So, I mean, I can't complain. Marseille win the Champions League in 2007. A real turn up for the books there. I would not have predicted that at all. And that's the beauty of these simulations. You never know what's going to happen. Oh my God. Massive move and actually somewhat realistic. R9 Ronaldo goes to Inter Milan. He, of course, played for Inter Milan in real life. And now he's going there in this simulation. Also, Philip Lam is there too, for whatever reason. I need, I guess Zanetti needed some competition. Seydorf leads for Real Madrid, a team from which he once played once again. Robbie Keane to Barcelona. Here we go. Let's go. Irish representation. Barzagli to Manchester United. Zanetti leaves Inter Milan. There you go. That's why they signed Philip Lam. For Arsenal, 16.4 million. Daniele De Rossi leaves for Liverpool. Wow, the Roma kid leaves already. The centre-back Pepe, who was playing for Charlton for whatever reason. Oh my God. He's now playing for Mallorca. That's so funny. He played for Charlton. Steven Pienaar leaves for Newcastle United. Glenn Johnson was Real Madrid to Dortmund. Hulk was with Blackpool and now he's with Hertha Berlin. That makes no sense. Okay. 2007 Ballon d'Or now. Eto, Ronaldinho, Henri and Robin van Persie. Two Arsenal players. Two Barcelona players. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or? Is it going to be Ronaldinho again or is Henri finally going to get the Ballon d'Or? That Let's be honest. He probably deserves at some point. Ballon d'Or winner is going to be Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho snatches another. 2007. In real life, 2008 was the beginning of the Messi and Ronaldo era. Let's see if that happens again in this simulation. Jesus Navas has gone to Parma. Patrice Evra to Arsenal. Metzelder has gone to Arsenal as well. Eric Abidal has gone to PSG. Fernandinho, Man City legend to Atletico Madrid. Karim Benzema to Regina from Newcastle. Future Ballon d'Or winner. It's the weirdest transfer ever. Edin Dzeko has gone from Saarbrücken to Barcelona. That's insane. 2000 
the night, Champions League. Arsenal, Dortmund. Dortmund are back there again. Juventus and Chelsea. These are all teams we've seen before, apart from Juventus. So let's go and check them out. This is the Juve team and it's frankly ridiculous. Ibrahimovic up front with Del Piero and Buffon in net. Nobody's going to score against this team. And uh, I mean, nobody's going to keep a clean sheet against them either because they have Damien Duff on the wing. In the Champions League, how are they doing? They are yet to play their first leg. Here we go. Chelsea in the first leg. 2-1 win for Chelsea. And now Juve have ground to make up. Let's see if they can do it. Can they claw it back? No. 2-1 winning for Chelsea again. Chelsea progress on to the Champions League final and it's probably going to be Arsenal they're playing against. So let's go to Chelsea and see how they're doing. And this is the Chelsea team. Mutu on the wing uh, with Drogba and Robin there as well. 92 overall. We'll probably see him in the Ballon d'Or at some point as well. In midfield, Lampard, Thiago and Raquel May. Shivu, Carvalho, Terry, Danny Alves is here and Petr Cech in net. It's an insanely strong Chelsea team and they go to the Champions League final. Also, Roy Keane is here for some reason as well as Juan Mata. It's a bit confusing, but hey, who cares? Okay, let's keep going. In the Premier League, they are fourth. Bolton are in Champions League places. Man United are top. That's insane. But there's a chance, actually, that Bolton could win the Premier League. I want to see, did they win the Premier League? Did Bolton win it? Oh, they finished second. City finished third and United finished top. Shock horror. Here we go. Arsenal versus Chelsea. And it's a Chelsea win in extra time. Drogba in the 86th to level it all up. Mutu with a brace. Chelsea win the Champions League early, by the way, in 2008, which was the year that they lost to Manchester United. They claw it back in Moscow and win the Champions League, just like they probably deserve to. 2008 transfer window. Biggest transfer is Luis Fabiano to Parma. 29 million for the Brazilian. Rafael van der Vaart moved to the Premier League as well. And Patrick Vieira joins forces with Lionel Messi in Roma. We're yet to see Roma really do anything with regards to European competitions, but expect them to. Roma will be there. Also, Patrick Vieira leaves Arsenal for Roma to join forces with Lionel Messi. What a Roma team that is now. Darren Benz, Samir Nasri both join Portsmouth. Yeah, th that's insane. Portsmouth having a 25 million euro transfer budget is just out of the question. Even nowadays, they probably don't even have that much in the budget. Second Champions League trophy. I still can't believe they won one. There's Lionel Messi in a Roman jersey. Oh my God, that looks so wrong. Ballon d'Or nominees. Who do we have? Okay, so we're dealing with Francesco Totti, Raul, Wayne Rooney, and Lionel Messi. He's there nominated. Before Cristiano Ronaldo's even nominated, we have Lionel Messi up for the Ballon d'Or. Of course, in 2009, he did win it. Can he win it one year early in 2008? Lionel Messi for Roma. Can he win the Ballon d'Or? No, he doesn't. It goes to Wayne Rooney, really interesting, becomes yet another English Ballon d'Or winner. Never happened in real life. Never quite made it to the Ballon d'Or, but Wayne Rooney does it. Oh my goodness. Wayne Rooney, a Ballon d'Or winner in this simulation. Anything interesting from January? Yes. Vincent Company to La Coruña. Oh my God. Biggest transfer of the entire season, leaving Bayern Munich for a club that's not even competitive in Spain in the current year. Massive move for the Belgian centre-back. Mikel Arteta leaves Sociedad and goes to Newcastle for 21 million. He's gone to Tyneside. That's insane. We're going to change up the pacing of this. We're going to watch the 2010 World Cup final when it happens. But of course, we're in 2009 right now. Champions League, Real Madrid, Manchester United, Borussia Dortmund versus Chelsea. Wow, okay. Let's go and visit Manchester United. We haven't been there yet. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, this Man United team is so interesting. First of all, Ronaldo's 95 overall, but he's a right mid. I might make him a striker just so he gets nominated for Ballon d'Ors and stuff like that. In midfield, Perlo and Fabregas. Neither of them have ever played for Manchester United before in real life, but they're here in this alternate universe. Also, Van Nistelrooy is still here alongside the Ballon d'Or winner, Wayne Rooney. Schweinsteiger is on the wing, just because he is. In defense, we have Rafa Marquez from Barcelona and still Rio Ferdinand. Barzagli is playing at right back and Tim Howard is in nets. The bold Neuer, he's playing in goals. They have Real Madrid to play and in the first leg, they are yet to play. They get a 3-2 loss. That's not great, but they might be all right. Let's submit this final game. Oh, they won 4-3 and it's going to be Chelsea in a Champions League final. A replay of the 2008 Champions League final, which was between Chelsea and Manchester United. Man United won that. This is in 2009, the year after, but Chelsea are coming off the back of a Champions League success of their own. Can they make it back-to-back -back Champions League wins? Yes, they can. A brace of Champions League wins for Chelsea, but Nistelrooy, Lampard, and Mutu with the goal to win the Champions League for Chelsea for the second year in a row. That Chelsea team is so, so strong. And unsurprisingly, they won the Premier League as well, granted on goal difference, but clearly the best team in Europe. Is anybody going to be able to stop this Chelsea team in the coming years? Maxi Rodriguez, the guy who only scored bangers, he he goes to Arsenal as well as R9 to Manchester United. That's two massive transfers. I'll be completely honest. I think the R9 one is probably bigger. Definitely in like stature. He's going to be huge for Manchester United to hopefully push on for that Champions League. Maybe take down Chelsea in 2010. Thomas Rosicki goes to Parma. They're a big club as well. Leaving Dortmund though, who could have maybe taken down Chelsea as well. Chelsea do lose Joe Cole as well. Okay, so maybe they are weaker this year. Can they be beaten? Real Madrid acquire his services. Edinson Cavani to Deportivo La Coruña. Insane. La Coruña gathering strength as well. Pepe to Werder Bremen. Raul 
to Newcastle. Here we go. Oh, that's so funny. Rafa Marquez. Ah, Manchester United do lose a player there. They do pick up Bosingwa though, which is a pretty shrewd signing from Monaco. They do lose Sagnol though. That is tough. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of if it's a bit iffy. Park Ji Sung does go to PSG. Pablo Zabaleta goes to Chelsea, and so does Alexis Sanchez from Real Madrid. The ex Barcelona player who was uh, for some reason playing for Real Madrid is now a Chelsea player. Chelsea looking to get three Champions Leagues in a row. You can kind of see these transfers as I cycle through them as we go down. They're absolutely insane. Some of these names are just blasts from the past. But who's going to win the Ballon d'Or? Will it be Cristiano Ronaldo finally? Will Lionel Messi conquer the Demons of 08 and finally win the one in 09? Or will it be Wayne Rooney again? <laughs> Let's find out. Ballon d'Or nominees. Eto, Adriano, Ronaldinho and Adrian Mutu for Chelsea. Oh my god. I knew Chelsea were good but I didn't realise they were so good to get Adrian Mutu a Ballon d'Or nomination. I'll be honest I don't think he'll win it. Adriano in there as well is a really interesting one by this point. Probably going back to the favelas. I'm not quite sure. Let's check who wins the Ballon d'Or though. It's Ronaldinho. Real surprises there in the nominations. No surprises in the eventual victor. Ronaldinho, once again, a Ballon d'Or winner. No sign of Messi, no sign of Ronaldo. A little bit worrying. Oh, wow. David Villa to Parma from Zaragoza. 43.2 million. What a guy. Yeah, Parma really are acquiring some talent. I wonder if they can push in the Champions League. They did lose Gelardinho, though. He's gone to Real Madrid. Luis Suarez has gone from Malaga to West Brom. 25 million for the Uruguayan. That is so funny. Luis Suarez is going to go and play in Birmingham. The poor guy. Here's the Champions League. Chelsea, they're back. Barcelona, Leverkusen and Real Madrid. I think I've been to all these teams, but to be honest, I'm not that interested in Leverkusen. I, th I think they will lose to Real Madrid. So I think I'm going to go and check on Chelsea. See who they really have right now. See if they can go three in a row. This is the Chelsea team that's apparently going to go back to back to back. Mutu, Drogba and Robin. Lampard in midfield. Basically the same team. Danny Alves is here, but we know that already. Zabaleta on the bench. Ardiga Johnson here as well. Roy Keane is still here. And obviously Alexis Sanchez. Matt Hummels is here as well. That's a bit of a weird one. But yeah, that Chelsea team is really, really good. They did draw their first leg against Barcelona. They beat Southampton. Can they get another final? Yes, they can. It's going to be Real Madrid as expected. In the Barclays Premier League table with one game to go, they are top by miles over Manchester United. They're going to do a double. They could actually do the treble here because they're in the FA Cup final and it's Man United to play against. Can Chelsea do the treble? They're on for it. They are on for it. They've won the Premier League and they've won the FA Cup. Can they end this three-peat of Champions League victories with a treble if they can get it over the line? And here we go. Can Chelsea do the treble? Three Champions Leagues in a row and to end it with a Premier League, an FA Cup and a Champions League. Can Chelsea do the treble? Yeah, they do! That's incredible. Three Champions League titles on the bounce and the final Champions League title is the end of a treble. That Chelsea team goes down in history as one of the greatest teams of all time. Back to back to back Champions League titles. What a team of absolute legends. That's unbelievable. Top score for this team was Didier Drogba, Robin and Mutu there as well. What an insane team. What an absolutely insane group of players. Three Champions Leagues on the bounce and the treble. They did the treble before Man City even did it. Unbelievable. And this is the situation at the World Cup. Italy topped their group. Germany and Brazil get through theirs as well. England topped theirs. Nine points in the group stage as well. They're just group stage merchants. Don't worry about it. France and Netherlands get through as well comfortably. Northern Ireland. That kind of looks like a Russian badge. I don't know why that looks Russian. Anyway, they get through their group in third probably. Portugal crashing out. There goes Ronaldo. Argentina and Spain no problems. Round of 16. They are the result. Germany lose to Mexico. The round of 16 merchants finally get through to a quarters. France knock out Serbia. Italy knocking out Turkey. Brazil beat Argentina in the round of 16. What a massive game that would have been. Spain, England and the Netherlands all go through. The US crash out. Round of 16. Uruguay, Mexico. Quarterfinals. Uruguay, Italy, Brazil and England all make it through. France out once again. Just like the 2006 World Cup final. They lose it. But in the simulation they won it. So I'm sure they're okay with it. Spain out as well in 2010. Their golden generation is no more. Netherlands not even making it past the quarters. Semis. There we go. Italy knock out Uruguay. Brazil knock out England. Thank God. Leaving us with a World Cup final of Italy versus Brazil. The biggest game in world football. The ultimate game. Everyone's game. The World Cup final. We're going to watch it. This is the Brazilian team that we're going to be playing against. Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Adriano. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got everyone. It's got everyone, okay? You, you don't even need to worry about it. It's a ridiculously good Brazilian team. But this is the Italian team and it's really, really good. I've just fixed it up and this is the best I can do. That's a ridiculously strong Italian team. Let's see if they can provide the World Cup final. Tactical view. Let's watch it play out. Here we go. Italy versus Brazil. Italy in the blue, Brazil in the yellow. The biggest game in world football, but it's 2010. Restarting from 2004. This is the World Cup final in 010. In 010, that's not a phrase. And Brazil come forward first. It's Silva on the ball, driving forward. Into Ronaldo R9. R9 holds off his man. Gets a shot off. No good. Kaká with the shot. 
opening goal. First five minutes, Brazil snatch it. It's Kaká straight off the bat. Brazil take the lead. He hasn't won a Ballon d'Or in this simulation like he did in real life, but Kaká proves his value and Brazil take a lead in the World Cup final. Italy need a goal and they need it now. Great ball into the box. It's Chiellini not quite winning the header. Cleared by Kaká up to Ronaldinho and that's halftime. Very entertaining half. Brazil took an early lead with a Kaká finish. Italy have defended brilliantly since. 1-0 to Brazil, but anything could happen. This is the second half of the World Cup final. Adriano to Ronaldo. Ronaldo spins the corner into Silva. And there's a second for Brazil. Excellent finish from Silva. Set up by Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, and basically the entire team. It was an excellent team goal. And Brazil make it too. And here comes Pirlo. Plays out wide to Totti. Totti holds off his man to Gilardinho. Can Italy get a goal back here? Would be massive for them. Gilardinho. There's the finish. Italy get a goal back. 77th minute. There's time yet for Italy to save this game. Brazil obviously hoping they don't. But Italy with a brilliant, brilliant counter-attacking goal. Gilardinho gets one in the World Cup final. We're heading into the 90th minute and here come Italy. The final chance for the Italian nation. They need this to win the 2010 World Cup. It's Totti. Can he hold off his man? Set anyone inside to Giladinho. Big save. Giladinho still got the ball. Maintains it to Zambrata. Z Zambrata with the shot. That's a big save. It's going to go out for a corner. Oh my God. Last ditch stuff from the Brazilian defense. Here we go. The final moment of the game. Pirlo on the corner. This could do it. Can Italy snatch it here? Giladinho! He's done it. It's a goal for Italy. And it's a brace for Giladinho. Oh my God. The World Cup final. The biggest game of all. Has a 90th minute equalizer. The last moment of the game. The last action was enough. And Italy equalized. We will have extra time here in Johannesburg. And it will be because of that header. What a finish. When it matters the most for his nation. And Italy progress. Italy keep going. Extra time it is. Kaka. Kaka coming through for Brazil. Kaka to Ronaldinho, what a save from Gigi Buffon. Massive stop from the Italian goalkeeper. Ronaldinho ruining his misses. What a massive chance for him. Whipped into the box. Well won. There's a header. Another one. It's Adriano of all people in the 2010 World Cup final. He wins from the corner and it's 3-2 to Brazil. Surely Italy don't come back from this again, do they? Great ball to Giladinho. Giladinho to Pirlo. Andrea Pirlo with a shot. Oh, he's in the post. Francesco Totti. And it's level. It's all equal. Italy score again. Francesco Totti with an excellent finish off the post. What a run from Pirlo, by the way. And it's 3 all. Unbelievable. Italy come back again. They will not lie down. They will not be defeated. This game has penalties written all over it. Kaká now. Last chance for Brazil. Brilliant tackle. The Italian defense stands strong. And it looks like we're headed to penalties. Here we go. The World Cup final. In 2006, it didn't go to penalties. France won the game 2-0 in this simulation. But in 2010, it goes the distance. A penalty shootout to decide the world champion. Simple as that. Five spot. Francesco Totti's up first. And he buries the spot kick. Top left. Excellent finish. Next up is Ronaldinho. Brazilian icon. Can he turn? Brazilian legend. Brilliant finish from him. Brazil looking for their sixth World Cup. Pirlo doesn't want that to happen. Brilliant finish from him. Now it's Kaká, the Ballon d'Or winner in real life. Can he bury the World Cup final penalty? Yes, he does. Four spot kicks. All of them converted. That means we're due a miss. Giladinho, the hero in the game, scores his penalty as well. He is an Italian World Cup hero, just like Roberto Baggio, but he scored his penalty. Adriano buries his as well. This is intense. Someone's going to miss one of these next four. And it's not going to be Daniele De Rossi. Buries his penalty. Three to go. Maicon steps up. And he sends the keeper the wrong way. Two penalties to go. It's Cagliarella for Italy. And he scores his penalty now. And we've had nine scores. And we are due a miss. It's Diego for Brazil to break Brazilian hearts. He doesn't. He puts it away. And here we are in sudden death. Zambrotta steps up and he scores his penalty. Brazil have to score to maintain themselves in this World Cup final. It's Chris. I don't know who he is. He steps up and it's saved by Buffon. Italy win the World Cup final in the most insane game game ever completely against the run of play Buffon is flooded by his teammates insane World Cup final hit Italy cling on at the end of regular time and the Penenka doesn't pay off why would you Penenka in a World Cup you're not Andrea Pirlo you're not him okay insane insane game of football but in 2010 in this simulation Italy are world champions wow Wesley Schneider to Real Madrid from Ajax 45 million for the Dutchman Michael Ballack also joins Fulham for some reason Maybe Fulham are putting together a title charge. Then Michaelis joins Real Madrid as well. Renato Silva, goal scorer.
Ecuador in the World Cup final joins Olympic Leon. Colo Torre to Parma. Here we go. Manuel Neuer leaves Schalke, but he goes to Toulouse instead of Bayern Munich. Only 79 rated, but he is 24. Meza Ozil leaves Marantes for Nantes. David Luiz to Real Zaragoza in Spain. Joe Hart plays for San Etienne now. He left Monaco for some reason. I don't know why it was at Monaco. Nominees. Ronaldo is there. Mutu, Wayne Rooney, and David Villa. Mutu gets nominated again, by the way. I, I don't know how, but I, I think Cristiano Ronaldo. I, I think so. I think this is going to be his year, finally. 2010. This was a messy Ballon d'Or year. Let's see if Cristiano Ronaldo can clinch it instead. Messi not nominated. Is Ronaldo the winner? Yes, he is. Cristiano Ronaldo snatches his first Ballon d'Or before Lionel Messi gets his hands on one. Excellent from the Portuguese striker. Transfer window. Anything interesting happens. Toby Rowland has gone to Deportivo La Coruña. He's a random person. Real Ferdinand leaves Manchester United and joins Parma. Parma are just getting stronger and stronger. They also signed Sean Wright Phillips. There you go. Of course, they got Colo Torre as well. Yeah, they're just getting stronger and stronger. This is the Bayern Munich team that's in the Champions League semi-final in 2011. Strikers are Aguero and Pizarro, I think. No, it's Milan Barros. There you go. Oh my God, Aguero is here. 22. Yeah, he's really good. Sergio Ramos is here and playing right back. 92 overall right back. That's insane. It's a really good team. It's a really solid team. Darren Fletcher is here as well. Tim Cahill. And Danovic and Nets on the bench. They have Rakitic. Chesney is here as well. Azpilicueta is here too for some reason. I don't really know why. But in the Champions League, they did beat Chelsea in the first leg. Ah, and they lost. But did they get through? I don't think they did. No, they didn't. Oh, that's so tough. Did Chelsea win the Champions League final again? Yes, they did. Barcelona to play against. Let's go check out Barcelona and see how they're doing in 2011. Wow. Ronaldinho, Eto and Iniesta as a front three is insane. Deco, Xavi and Gabri is playing CDM. No, Van Bommel is. Okay. And it looks like this is the starting team. Ledley King is starting at centre back alongside Carlos Puyol. Robbie Keane is here on the bench as well as Edin Dzeko. Boyan is still here. 67 rated. God, he sucks. And Wes Brown too. Oh, those old Barca kids are so lovely. Okay. We're going to go to the Champions League final and see how they get on. Chelsea to play against. And yeah, Chelsea could make this four Champions League titles in a row, which is just insane. Can they break Real Madrid's records? And this is the Chelsea team that's trying to go four in a row. It's the exact same team that's been here the entire time. Matt Hummel starting in centre back now as well. Can Chelsea win the Champions League for the fourth season in a row? Yes, they do. In extra time, Robin and Mutu score. Mutu always scores in these finals. Yeah, he scored the first goal as well. Chelsea, Champions League winners for the fourth season in a row. They just keep winning. Who's going to knock them off their perch? Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, or any other team. Who's it going to be? For the record, my money is on Borussia Dortmund, but I'm not sure how well that's going to go. Oh my God, Parma keep buying players, but I'm just waiting for them to exist. Pandev has gone to Parma, so has Deco. Granted, he's 34, but he's still good at football. Dirk Kite's gone to Birmingham City. Cagliarella from the World Cup final. He's gone to Spurs. Diego Godin's gone to Fulham as well. I like Fulham are buying good players as well. Lucio goes to Chelsea. That's a bit scary. God, they're not going to get better, are they? Rafa Marquez goes to Barcelona. Leighton Baines goes to Bolton. Wow, okay. Ledley King goes to Liverpool, leaves Barcelona. Can Ronaldo go back to back in Ballon d'Ors? First, he has to be nominated, and he is. Right down the end. Rooney, Adriano, who's still playing football. Ronaldinho and Cristiano Ronaldo. Here we go. The big Ballon d'Or, 2011. All forces at their peaks. Generations colliding. And will it be Ronaldinho? Will it be Ronaldo? Or will it be somebody else? Going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. Second year on the bounce. The next generation has overtaken the present. Cristiano Ronaldo, 2011 Ballon d'Or winner. No sign of Messi anywhere, by the way. I wonder if he'll transfer again. He may leave Roma. I've seen it happen before. January transfers, anything interesting? Lucas Podolski to Liverpool. I wonder if they can mount a challenge against Chelsea. Also, Busquets has gone to Birmingham City. The poor, poor man. And this is the Parma team that's in the Champions League semi-final. David Villa, Fabiano, and Farfan up top. Solomon Kalou is here. Jesus Navas is 90 rated. That is disgusting. Reyes in midfield with Deco. In defense, oh my God, they have a 68 rated center back. Oh my God, how are they still going? That's insane. Uh, Real Ferdinand's here as well, and Frey too. They also have a strong bench, but that's insane. Yeah, they really have no other defenders. Eden Hazard is here. Oh my God. Balotelli as well. Obviously, Pandev is here too. They did win their first leg against Juventus, and all Italian affair in the semi-final, they close it out, and in the final, it's naturally Chelsea to play against. Oh my god, Chelsea are on for five. Here we go. Chelsea versus Parma. Surely Chelsea don't do it again, do they? Oh my god! They've got five in a row! That's matched Real Madrid record from like the 1950s, Alfredo Di Stefano times. That's insane! Mutu again, by the way. He scored two, and Chelsea win the Champions League for the fifth year in a row. That is not fair. That's just not not fair. No way. Oh my. I hate this alternate universe. Surely they don't get six. Do they? Biggest transfer. Kirk Bean. Okay. That's a real name. He's gone to Spurs. Zabaleta leaves for Real Madrid. Pedro goes to Auxerre. Neuer goes to Leon. Ashley Coles goes to Spurs. Colo Torre to Milan. Drogba to Getafe. The end of an era. Didier Drogba leaves Chelsea. Who won the Ballon d'Or though? It's Ronaldinho. It's Ronaldinho again. He comes back after Ronaldo wins two and wins the Ballon d'Or again. It's not over. The Ronaldinho era continues. Mike Conley's Monaco for Manchester City. Yeah.
yeah, okay, so they have the money in now. I wonder if they can push on and take Chelsea's spot. Raja Nangalin goes to Hanover 96. Michael Carrick to Bolton as well as Alex. Bolton just have 42 million lying around to buy like world-class talent with apparently. And here we go. We're going to do this together. Let's check who is in Champions League contention. They're gone. They're not there anymore. Chelsea, five times in a row. Not this time. They got knocked out in the round of 16 to Real Madrid. And now they have Inter. Two all in that tie. Atletico though have Bayern Munich. Let's go check on Atletico Madrid. We haven't seen them yet at all. This is the Atletico Madrid team. Torres up front. Fernandinho at CDM and Landro in nets. It's a good team. I don't really think it's a Champions League semi-final team though, to be completely honest. How are they doing? They're down against Bayern Munich. Can they come back? No. 5-3 it ended up being. Let's simulate out a little bit more and then go to Bayern Munich to sim out the final. And here we go. Who is going to take Chelsea's throne? Real Madrid versus Bayern Munich. Here we go. The biggest game in world football. And it's Real Madrid that get the win. I think that's appropriate that they end the streak that Chelsea matched. Five years on the bounce ended by Real Madrid. Wesley Schneider and Gilardino with the goals. The Italian striker and the Dutch maestro end Chelsea's run at the top of European football. Five years is over. We can finally look into the future. Let's go to the 2013 transfer window and see if there's any interesting moves. I reckon Chelsea might just blow up their entire project and start again. Massive transfer for Marcelo, leaving Inter Milan to go with Atletico Madrid. Not Real Madrid this time around. Alexis Sanchez also leaves Chelsea and joins Parma. There you go. 33 million Parma again accruing talent. Yaya Torre to Espanyol for 30 million from Spurs. Di Maria joins Messi at Roma. Haven't really seen Roma at all in this video, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do pop up eventually. Oh, wow. There's Neymar. He was at Southampton, which is a good place to be. But now he's also at Parma. Yeah, Parma are just going to get really strong. We didn't expect Chelsea to do as well as they did. So what makes us think Parma will as well? Ballon d'Or this year goes to Samuel Eto. O. He's been nominated a few times, but he hasn't won it yet. There's just always been somebody better. Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, even the likes of Rooney. But no, this year is Samuel Eto'o's year. The Ballon d'Or goes back to Africa with Samuel Eto'o. Interesting move for Gareth Bale, who's still a left back in this simulation, by the way. He joins Middlesbrough from Roma. So Roma losing players now. Van der Vaart, Odioni Gallo goes to Blackburn, Chivu to Bolton, Jordi Alba to Borussia. This is insane. Aymar to Parma, they get stronger again. Gareth Barry to Getafe, very exotic, Mr. Barry. Champions League semi-finals, you'll be glad to know Chelsea are still not here. Milan, Roma, Barcelona, and Juventus. Definitely want to check on Roma. I want to see how Messi's doing. We haven't seen him at all. This is the Roma team. Up front, we have Michael Owen and Di Maria. Really strong up top. Lionel Messi is on the right wing. 95 overall. What a piece of business. You also have D'Alessandro on the left. In midfield, they have Patrick Vieira and Mikel Arteta. And in defense, they have Luis Xiao and Lugano. At left back, they have Zaccardo. At right back, they have Heitinger. And in nets, they have Akinfeo. It's a really good Roma team. Probably Champions League standard. And how did they get on? In the first leg, here we go. Roma versus Milan. 2-1 to Roma in the first leg. They're looking good to get to a Champions League final. It'll be Messi's first time there. Let's see if they can convert the other leg. Can they get through? 3-2. They draw that leg and they have Juve in the final. All Italian final. Here we go. Roma versus Juventus in the Champions League final. Huge moment here. And it's going to be Juventus in the purple kit. Falke, Batistella and Zlatan Ibrahimovic with the goals. Juventus prevail. They win the Champions League in 2014. No good for Roma. But Italy can make it back up. There's a World Cup coming up in 2014. Let me sim it out and talk you through what happened. And here's what happened. Group A, Italy and Brazil get through. Ireland on four points. We should be through. So I'm pretty happy with that. We knock out Belgium as well, which is brilliant. France and Scotland get through their groups, which is amazing. Portugal and Uruguay progress as do Germany and Colombia. Norway top their group alongside Spain and the United States in third. England and Argentina both get through Group A. In the round of 16, Brazil beat Uruguay and Ireland knock out France. Come on, we keep going. Germany knock out Ukraine and Turkey knock out Italy. Wow, the champions from last time out. Not doing so well. England beat Scotland in the round of 16. That would have been hotly anticipated. Spain beat Argentina. Portugal just get past Japan on penalties and Norway straight by Colombia. Quarterfinals. We had Brazil and we lost. Okay, that's not the worst. I can live with that. Germany, Spain and Portugal all go through. England goes out, so I'm happy. In the semi-finals, Brazil knock out Germany to reach the World Cup final once again. Now they have Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal to play in 2014. 14-13 on penalties. Sorry. Never mind. Can Cristiano Ronaldo win the World Cup? Yes, he does. Oh my God. Portugal in 2014. It's Cristiano Ronaldo in Brazil upsetting the hosts and winning the World World Cup. Incredible. In this simulation, Cristiano Ronaldo wins the World Cup. In this simulation, would he be the GOAT? Because, I mean, he's already won two Ballon d'Ors and he's won the World Cup. Unbelievable. Cristiano Ronaldo, World Cup winner. Biggest transfer is Michael Essien going to Hertha Berlin. 28 million for him. Marek Hamšík as well goes to Atletico Madrid. David Luiz to Getafe. That's an interesting one. Marwan Fellaini joins the Italian Giants Juventus. Champions League winners from last season, of course. Thibaut Courtois from Monaco to Norwich City. Okay, Norwich get Thibaut Courtois. That's insane. Benucci goes from Kaiserslautern to Manchester United as Skirtle leaves Manchester United, ex-Liverpool player, of course, in real life, and joins Inter Milan. Daniel Sturridge was with Barcelona.
Barcelona and now he's not. He's with Atalanta. But we're starting to see a lot more auto-generated players. Still mainly normal players, but auto-generated players are definitely sneaking their way in here now. And who wins the Ballon d'Or in 2014? Cristiano Ronaldo. He wins his third and he's won the World Cup. Man, he actually is the GOAT in this simulation. That's insane. Cristiano Ronaldo just doing GOAT things for Manchester United and for Portugal. And who's in the Champions League now? 2015. We've been simming now for over a decade. What did the Champions League look like? Here we go. Liverpool, Barcelona, Bayern Munich versus AC Milan. We haven't been to AC Milan yet, so we will check them out. But yeah, it's still the same teams. No massive, mega weird ones yet. We have seen Parma there, but I don't think that's too out there, to be completely honest. Let's go and check out AC Milan first. And here's the AC Milan team. Shevchenko and Dzeko up front, a Barcelona player in this simulation. Peter Odom Wingy is here, but Kaka is playing at Cam, and that makes perfect sense. And next is Briggs, who's an auto-generated player. Yeah, so we're starting to get some auto-generated players coming through now. But that AC Milan team is still very real and very, very good. They play against Bayern Munich. First leg for them is a 2-1 loss. That's not great. Can they make it up? No. Bayern Munich draw the next leg. Bayern Munich play in the Champions League final. Who will they play against? It's going to be Bayern Munich versus, it looks like Liverpool. They're 2-1 up at the moment. Uh, let's go to Bayern Munich and see who they play. And it's going to be Barcelona versus Bayern Munich. And this is the Barcelona team. They apparently knocked out Liverpool in the semi-finals, came back from the deficit. Let's see if Bayern Munich and Sergio Aguero can win this final. 2-0 loss. Iniesta and Ronaldinho with the goals. Sergio Ramos comes off before halftime, absolutely fuming. And Barcelona are Champions League winners once again. I wonder if Lionel Messi regrets leaving for Roma now. Because he is one of the best players in the world. He's only been nominated for a Ballon d'Or. Hasn't even won one yet. And Barcelona have been doing incredible things in the Champions League. Whereas biggest transfer this window, Dries Mertens moves from Ghent to Regina. 36 million for the Belgian. I feel like he's like really underrated for some reason. Diego Godin goes to Inter Milan as well. Also, we do have an auto-generated player. So yeah, we're starting to get some auto-generated guys in there. Gary Cahill to Milan. Toby Alderweireld to Arsenal instead of Tottenham. That's sacrilegious. But yeah, look at this. Loads of auto-generated guys now. Sully Montari to Birmingham. Anderson to Southampton. He kind of fulfilled his potential, I guess. Definitely stayed a little bit longer than expected anyway. Hatton Ben Arfa to Aston Villa. Wow. Oh God. Micah Richards to Man United. That's ridiculous. Bursting onto the scene like that at Man City just to leave for Manchester United. With a quick stop of Bolton, by the way. Ballon d'Or winner is announced for 2015. And there we go. Finally, Lionel Messi wins his Ballon d'Or. He's still with Roma, but it doesn't matter this time around. Finally, he gets the reward that he probably deserves. Let's see if he can claw back Ronaldo's lead. Although Ronaldo did win a World Cup, so I think Ronaldo's far ahead. But anyway, we'll see how he goes. You may be surprised by this, but Manchester City are in the Champions League semi-final. They did lose to Bayern Munich though in the first leg, so I think they'll get knocked out. But while we're here, let's have a quick look at their team. Jaime Martinho on one wing and Partridge on the other. I'm going to play Signe Cavu instead. Up front, they have De Luca. Yeah, also generated. But they do have Dimitri Payet at Cam. That's interesting. As well as Adam Lallana, for whatever reason. Back in his prime, Barzagli is here at Manchester City. But yeah, th this team is good, but it's not like insane, I suppose. I kind of expect a little bit better from a Champions League semi-final team. I fully expect Bayern Munich to beat them. Let's see if City can claw it back. No, they don't. 6-2. They get destroyed. And here's the Real Madrid team. Giladino up front. Schneider at Cam. It's really, really solid. They're in a Champions League final against Bayern Munich. Casillas and Nez. Zabaleta is here. Demichelis as well. Arda Turan on the wing. Oh my god. 2015 Champions League final. Who's it gonna be? It's Bayern Munich. 10-9 on penalties. Giladino misses the essential one after doing so well for Italy in that World Cup final all those years ago. But oh my god, look at those penalties. Giladino. Wait, did he miss two? Oh my god, he missed two penalties. Aguero had to take two penalties and so did Giladino. He missed two penalties in the same penalty shootout. Has that ever been seen before? Never mind in the Champions League final. Back at the transfer window, Pedro to Liverpool. That's insane. Hendo. He was at Celtic for some reason and now he's with Juventus. He's with the European contenders. Maybe he can win the Champions League. Fellaini to Chelsea. Here we go. But yeah, a lot of auto-generated players, but still some normal ones. Frank Ribéry leaving Birmingham City for Palermo. Lucas Leiva goes to Valencia. Azpilicueta joins Getafe. Yeah, it's a mess. Coutinho joins Palermo to team up with Ribéry. That's a bit of a weird mishmash. Ballon d'Or winner. Will it be Messi again? Robert Lewandowski wins himself a Ballon d'Or. One of the best players to never win the Ballon d'Or. He wins it this time around. This time with Wolfsburg. Uh, a bit weird, but uh, anyway, Robert Lewandowski wins himself a Ballon d'Or. Top transfer, it's Blackburn Rovers and Alexis Sanchez. I feel physically sick in my stomach. Yasin Brahimi joins Chelsea, 28 million more or less. Podolski to Atalanta, he leaves Liverpool. But yeah, it's a lot of auto-generated players and players that we've already covered. Starting to pick up the pace a little bit more now. We can move through the tournaments a bit quicker. Let's go to May and see who's in the Champions League of 2017. Now, during these simulations, you can expect to see some crazy things. Some things maybe you wouldn't expect, like Blackburn in the Europa League. But things like this have happened before. Fulham have made Europa League finals. But this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in any simulation ever. Bolton Wanderers are in the Champions League semi-final. Not only that, they are winning their tie against AS Monaco. This is the ultimate.
their fairy tale run. In the group stage, they had Barcelona in their group. In the round of 16, they knocked out Villarreal. In the quarters, even better, they knocked out Middlesbrough. I don't know how Middlesbrough are a Champions League side now. They just are. It makes sense. And then in the semis, they're up against Monaco. You may be wondering, how the hell do they have a team good enough to win a Champions League semi-final? And I'd be kind of asking the same or a similar thing. David Silva, though, is definitely their star player. 90 overall up top. They've got a great goalkeeper, a solid back line, and yeah, just an all-around decent team. A 90-rated right back for some reason. They've got Ricardo Caresma. They've got Robbie Keane. He's old, but I mean, he, he like exists and stuff. That's probably good. They've got Gaetan and Hansen in midfield. Unbelievable. What a team. What a team of legends. Bolton Wanderers to the moon. I don't know why they've got Blackburn kids, but we'll just have to work with it. Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And they're winning their leg against Monaco. Can they close it out? Yes, they do. They're in the Champions League final and they're going to be playing against Inter Milan. 2017, by the way. This was one of Real Madrid's three Champions Leagues in a row. I think this was the one they won in Cardiff. Oh my God, they won the Premier League as well. Hold on one minute. They top the Premier League. 72 points. Unbelievable season. Bolton Wanderers are Premier League champions. Blackburn finished fifth. Birmingham finished seventh. Where are Middlesbrough? 15th, despite being in a Champions League quarterfinal. It was in a fairy tale run. Preston had a season in the Premier League in 2017. That's insane. And right at the top of the tree, Bolton Wanderers. Incredible. They also won the FA Cup. So they're on for a treble. Bolton are on for a treble. This is the most insane thing I've ever seen. There you go. They beat Newcastle in the FA Cup final. They win the Premier League. Can they do the treble? Please, please tell me they can. No! No! Why? Oh, that would have been so funny. Fogden is livid. Inter Milan are Champions League winners with a brace from Kohler. Oh, no. That would have been so funny. For those of you that don't know, I actually used to support Bolton as a child. Yes, I used to support them and I don't anymore. The only reason I supported them was because alphabetically, their name was closest to mine. Because my name is Ben and Bolton, obviously, B-E-B-O. It's, it's pretty close. Not that I have B-O. But, but upon looking back on the season that I chose to support Bolton, I was eight years old, by the way. It turns out Blackburn Rovers was actually alphabetically closer to my name and I just, just neglected to look at them for some reason. I don't really know, but I used to support Bolton for a while. Um, I don't know why. Bit of a miserable city. To be fair, Derby isn't much better, but at least I have reason to support Derby. A few interesting transfers for this one. First of all, Mesut Ozil from Nantes to Southampton. Brilliant. Okay, I, I don't know why. Antoine Griezmann used to be a Charlton Athletic player. That's hilarious. And now he's playing for AS Roma. Just stupid. Juan Mata joins Manchester United. Realistic. Nasri joins Real Betis. Unrealistic. By this point, he'd probably retired from football and cheated on his wife another three times. Ryan Babel joins Regina. Carlos Vea joins Spezia. Jesus. By this point, he was in the MLS. Poor guy. Isco to West Brom. Here we go. Birmingham is absolutely bouncing. Micah Richards leaves Man United after a season. He got his bag, man. Let him run. He goes to Newcastle. Solomon Kalou to PSG. Yaya Torre to Real Madrid. Gary Cahill back to the Premier League with Blackburn Rovers. Contending for a title, actually, because Blackburn are good in this simulation. Although I could go back and they'll be fighting for relegation. That's honestly how, like, bipolar these Premier League seasons can be. Ballon door winner. It's David Silva, but his, uh, oh my God, his chest is clipping through his shirt. That is so funny. The 2017 Ballon d'Or has been won by Bolton Wanderers, David Silva. That is hilarious. That's the most cursed image ever. With the shirt being broken and, oh my God. The simulation is getting more and more wacko as we keep going. It's going to get crazy by the time it gets to 2024. I'm here with Wolfsburg and they're in the Champions League semi-final in this simulation alongside their star striker, Robert Lewandowski, who's actually fast in this simulation. They've also got Miralem Pjanic in midfield. Field. They have Ranocchi in defense with Mexes and Kasper Schmeichel in nets. Rosicki is here as well, as well as the Irish legend and the slowest player in FIFA history, David D Richard Dunn. And if he's not the slowest player in FIFA history, he's damn near. They've drawn their first leg against Atletico Madrid. Can they win at home? They lose on penalties. That is heartbreaking. So it's going to be Atleti versus Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich always make the Champions League final, it feels like. Let's go check on Atletico Madrid and see how they're doing. And while this Atletico Madrid team has had some changes, a lot of it remains fairly similar. Fernando Torres is still up front. They still have so said CDM. He's 56 rated. There's no way he's actually playing. They have got Daniele Di Rossi though, as well as Marek Hamšík on the wing. Marcelo is here instead of playing for Real Madrid. I don't like that at all. Mertes Sacker at centre back with Colaccini. It's a really good Atletico Madrid team, but let's see if they can win the Champions League final. Here we go. Bayern Munich versus Atletico Madrid. And this is the Bayern Munich team. In case you forgot, Aguero is still there, as well as Sergio Ramos and Chiellini. Bafatimbi Gomez is Aguero's strike partner as well, which is a bit weird. But anyway, we'll let him off the hook. It's Bayern Munich versus Atletico Madrid in the Champions League final, 2018, and it's a Bayern. Munich 
Munich whitewash. Four for them, four different goal scorers, domination from the Bavarians, 2018 Champions League winners. There's only a couple of years left in this simulation. And if your favorite team hasn't won the Champions League yet, just wait, because I think as the simulation goes on, it's going to get even more crazy. As well as that, Messi hasn't won a Champions League, so we need to see him do that. And Ronaldo hasn't been great in it either. But first, we have a World Cup 2018. Let's sim it out and see how it goes. Here's the World Cup groups. Brazil doing absolutely abysmally. Zero wins, zero points. Uh, bottom of their group. France and Belgium progress. Anyway, Germany and United States go through. Ireland get three points. We should be okay with that. Spain get nine. Dominant from Spain. I wonder if they'll win it all. Croatia do well as well, as well as Switzerland. Uruguay, bottom of the group. They're out. Colombia atop their group over the Netherlands. That's really good. England top their group. Northern Ireland second up. And in Group F, Italy and Argentina go through. No surprises there. In the round of 16, it's Croatia going through, knocking out Belgium. Ireland knock out Colombia. Come on. But Switzerland knock out France, just like the Euros round of 16 from 2021. On the other side, Italy knock out the US. Argentina knock out Russia. Spain go through. And so do England over the Netherlands. In the quarterfinals, it's Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and Spain knocking out their teams. Ireland don't progress once again. But to be honest, we've done pretty well in these World Cups, so I'm kind of happy, to be honest. Like, in 2018, we were absolutely hopeless, not even close to qualifying. In the semi-finals, Germany progress on penalties over Switzerland, and Spain knock out Italy. Italy, of course, get third place, leaving us with a Spain-Germany final, and the winner is Spain. A 2-0 win in the final. They didn't win it in 2010, or even 2014, but in 2018, for whatever reason, they dominate the World Cup, winning their group on nine points, flying through the knockout phases, and winning the World Cup. Adrian Sands, 40 million to Getafe. Lewis David, uh, what, 36 million? Francisco Acosta. Okay, I don't know who any of these people are. Courtois has gone to Bayern Munich, though. That's cool from Norwich. Oh, my God. Hamshik leaves at Let's Madrid after losing the Champions League final. Sorry, getting battered in the Champions League final. Balotelli to Birmingham City. Here we go. He makes the move from Portsmouth to Birmingham. Yes, he's done it. That's right. Alexander Pato is still alive and playing football. God, he's gone to Inter Milan. Pretty realistic, to be honest. Wesley Schneider to Wolfsburg. Sounds a bit weird, but in this simulation, Wolfsburg is still a big club, so it makes sense. Chesney goes to Manchester United. Ben Arfa goes to Nantes. Ar Arda Turan goes to Juventus. 2018 Ballon d'Or. Messi and Ronaldo are definitely both nominated. Who's going to win it? It's Lionel Messi. The competition is still alive. Lionel Messi is peaking later in his career. Are we finally, though, going to see a Roma run to the Champions League? We'll have to find out. Roma are in a Champions League semi-final, and here they are with their crown jewel. Lionel Messi, the two-time Ballon d'Or winner. Now 32, getting on. Can he win his first ever Champions League title? Additionally, up front, Griezmann and Di Maria. What a strike pairing that is, by the way. Arteta is still here and still playing. He's playing in CDM. Crescito beside him. Akinfeev still in goals. It's a good Roma team, but they have to play against Bayern Munich, who seem to be in these Champions League semi-finals all the time. First leg in Bayern Munich. Hopefully, ah, it's a nil-nil draw, and Bayern win the reverse leg. Nothing for Messi. Once again, he falls short. But let's go to Bayern Munich and see who they have in the Champions League final. And here it is. Ivan Rakitic is up to a 90 overall, by the way. At 30 years old. Aguero, 93, still balling out. Chiellini in defense alongside Sergio Ramos. Yeah, it's a ridiculously strong Bayern Munich team. To be honest, it's probably best to play Chiellini CDM and then play Vieira at centre-back. Absolutely insane. They're probably going to win the Champions League final. I'm not quite sure who they're going to play against, but we are about to find out. Bayern Munich are top of the Bundesliga. They're in the DFB Pokal final and they have Atletico Madrid to play in the Champions League final. Can they do a treble? They've basically already locked up the league, even though they do lose to Hertha Berlin. They lose in the final and they do beat Atletico Madrid. Okay, so they win the Bundesliga, they win the Champions League, but in the DFB Pokal, they fall short. No treble for Bayern Munich, but hey, still a really, really good season. They're insane. Can anyone topple the Bavarian Giants? Messi's Rome has got a little bit weaker. Angel Di Maria joins Real Betis for 27 million. On top of that, David Luiz from Parma to Southampton. He's still really good in this simulation, but I mean, he's with Southampton, so what can he really do? Although, to be fair, the Premier League table is all over the place. We'll have a look at it in 2024 at the end of this simulation. Ballon d'Or winner for 2019. Who's this? Is it Aguero? Yeah, it is. Sergio Aguero for Bayern Munich. 2019 Ballon d'Or winner. Wow. Aguero wins a Ballon d'Or. It's not really that messy Ronaldo dominance. We're having a few variations in there. Lewandowski, Rooney, and now Aguero. It's nice to see. Guess what? Bolton are back in the big time. They're back in the Champions League semi-final. Now they have some extra reinforcements. Theo Walcott, Javi Martinez, but David Silva is still here. Regressing, but a Ballon d'Or winner. So I think they'll take the experience, to be honest. But it's a super strong Bolton team in Blackburn kits. We won't talk about it, though. Let's have a quick look at the Premier League, though. They are sick. So they're not on track for Champions League again. Who's top of the Premier League? Oh my god. There's a four-way tie. Liverpool have a game in hand though, but still, that's insane. Middlesbrough are second. Southampton seventh, Arsenal eighth, Blackburn ninth, Portsmouth tenth, Man City 17th after getting to a Champions League final, I believe. But damn, they're gonna get relegated. That is so funny. And Bolton won the first leg. 5-1 on aggregate. Dominant. Now it's Bayern Munich in a Champions League final. Bayern Munich, they're back again. They're back again, okay? They're trying to break Chelsea's five trophy streak. It is not gonna happen. Here we go. Bayern Munich versus Bolton Wanderers. And it is Bolton Wanderers! The Champions Champions League goes to the north of England. Thogden is knee sliding through Munich. Bolton are Champions League 
winners. That is unbelievable. This simulation is so busted. 2020. If the pandemic never happened, Bolton would have won the Champions League. You heard it here first. Also means they qualify for the Champions League again next year, which is pretty cool. The Ballon d'Or winner has been announced. Who's it going to be? Oh, it's Sergio Aguero again. Two for Messi and two for Sergio Aguero. Is he in there with Messi and Ronaldo? That's amazing. He's probably had a better career than Messi, to be honest. I mean, he's won the Champions League loads of times. Like, yeah, probably a better career. That's insane. Aguero, the go. Manchester United, here we are. Champions League semi-final time for them. Ronaldo has regressed. 91 overall. 36 now, but still at Manchester United and still alongside Wayne Rooney. That is really, really weird to say. Schweinsteiger has been here the whole time as well, by the way, as well as Fabregas. But yeah, we're moving into the territory of just we know none of these players at all. Tom Cleverley is also still here. What a guy. But let's see how they do. They have Atalanta to play against. The first leg is up and they are 1-0 down. They could come back from this though. Where do things have happened? They don't. A one all draw leaves them out of the Champions League. However, they're third in the Premier League uh, behind Liverpool and Bolton. <laughs> Bolton are top eye miles. 18 points clear. Mate, they are dominating modern football. This is so funny. Middlesbrough fifth, Southampton sixth as well. West Brom 11th, Charlton 12th. Portsmouth are there. Preston are in the Premier League and got relegated. Manchester City are in the Championship. And here they are, second in the Championship, just behind Norwich on 107 points. They're insane. Also down here is Leicester alongside Oxford United. God, that's so weird to see. This is the Real Madrid team. And honestly, it's not that good. It's, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. But yeah, their attacking three is really good. Their striker isn't particularly great. They have weaknesses at fullback and center mid. It's not the greatest Real Madrid team I've ever seen. They do have Atalanta to play against. And in the final, it's Atalanta who take it. Castro Johansson and Daniel Sturridge with the goals. Oh my God, Daniel Sturridge. He's back from the dead. 2021 Champions League winners are Atalanta. That's a real turn up for the books. Ballon d'Or winner, 2021. It's going to be Sergio Aguero again. The man's got three. This is insane. Bayern Munich Sergio Aguero with his third Ballon d'Or. That's more than Messi. Sergio Aguero is the guy of this generation. That's insane. This year, Villarreal are in the Champions League semi-final and this is their team. Adebayor in 2022, still playing football. He's going to get replaced though by Chris T. Starts up front alongside Alejandro Gomez. Other than that, we have Mario Suarez and Bassong. And Rui Patricio was well, but other than that, we have no real players. And Villarreal in 2022 have to play against Real Betis. They're losing from the first leg. Can they come back and get into this Champions League final? No, they don't. Real Betis progress. Okay, so I've been swimming with the same derby team now for the entire simulation, 18 years. And uh, this is the state of a team when you do nothing with it. We have a seven overall CDM. I didn't think numbers could go that low, but apparently they can on FIFA. Uh, we also have uh, basically our entire sub bench other than three people made up of complete goalkeepers. Garcia Pons, I have no idea who he is. He's 40, he's 26 over overall. Biscard is 20 overall and he's 47 but he's still playing for us because we have no players. Vata is 49 but he's from the Republic of Ireland. Yay! This team is an absolute disgrace but we don't really care. There's a World Cup on this year and there's also a Champions League final to see who won. And who wins the Champions League? It's going to be Sampdoria over Real Betis. They knock out Bayern Munich, Aguero fuming and Sampdoria do it in 2022. That's insane. And this is a 2022 FIFA World Cup. France and Turkey get through their group. Italy and the United States get through. Brazil finishing third in their group again, by the way. Four from them. Uruguay and Spain get through. Northern Ireland on three points. They should be all right. England top their group with nine points. Mega result for England. Poland coming second. Serbia knocked out. And Mexico and Norway get through. Germany third. It should be all right. Not very convincing. And then Group F. Belgium top it. Portugal second. And Argentina third, but only on two points. That might not be enough to get them through. And it isn't. Round of 16. Spain, Brazil, England, and France all go through. Germany out. Unconvincing display at the World Cup. And the same with Italy. On the other side, Belgium go through. Portugal as well. Uruguay knock out Russia and Mexico knock out Poland to make it to the quarterfinals and in the quarterfinals it's a Spain-Brazil matchup and Spain win it 2-0 also England are out which is amazing France beat them Belgium beat Portugal on penalties there goes Cristiano Ronaldo and Mexico knock out Uruguay leaving semi-finals Spain-France and Belgium versus Mexico and it's going to be France versus Belgium in the World Cup final two French speaking nations Spain knocked out the winners from 2018 of course and Mexico make it the whole way to the semi-finals what a run from them third place result does go Mexico's way so they do finish third at the World Cup and the world champions are going to be France again they won the first World Cup of this simulation. They're going to win the last World Cup of this simulation. 2006 and 2022 World Champions, France. Ballon d'Or 2022. The second last Ballon d'Or of this entire video. And it's going to be an auto-generated player. That's how you know it's crumbling. Liverpool's Robin Backer, a Liverpool attacker, I'm sure. The Ballon d'Or win for himself. That's very, very sad to see. Yeah, the world's crumbling as we see it. Let's go the whole way out to May. See what the Champions League is looking like. 2023, the second last year of the simulation. And the last complete year of football as of recording of this video. Of course, we're going to go to the end of the 2024 season and see where we're at. But the Ballon d'Or is officially out of the hands of humans and into the hands of AI. And hey, Liverpool made it to a Champions League semi-final. So here is Bakair, the Ballon d'Or winner. 96 pace, 90 shooting, 90 dribbling, 80 
27th. God, I feel sick. From the Netherlands as well. Another great Dutch striker. This team is really, really good. They also have Salah in midfield. Not Salah, but Salah. Kind of the same, though. Kind of nice to see Salah's not completely gone. Also, Otamendi's playing centre-back and Jordi Alba's playing left-back. Yeah, welcome to the future. They have... Who do they have in the Champions League? They have Sampdoria in the Champions League. Last year's winner. Two all draw in the first leg. And the other semi-final is Bolton versus Arsenal. Liverpool get to the Champions League final. They beat Middlesbrough. And they have Bolton to play in the Champions League final. Let's go. In the Premier League standings, Liverpool are actually sick. Poor season for them, but not a poor season for Bolton. The Premier League domination continues. Bogdan up front. 73 points. You already know the rest. And here we go. Liverpool versus Bolton. We already know Bolton are class. David Silva's moved out to the wing just for the betterment of the team. He's a club legend there in Bolton. Liverpool versus Bolton. Here we go. And it's Bolton who take it. Their second Champions League title. John Abibakel scores. Back here, the Ballon d'Or winner gets one back. But Brewer puts Liverpool to bed. And Bolton take the 2023 Champions League trophy. One more year to go. The end of our simulation is upon us. Let's see who can win the Champions League in 2024. The final Ballon d'Or 2023. Who's it going to be? It's another player. We don't know. What, what, what's his name? Bolton Wanderers Cabezas. That's the guy that played striker and David Silva playing on the wing. Okay, so we have another Bolton player winning the Ballon d'Or. Oh, I love the Bolton dominance. It's so funny. Bogdan is knee sliding. PSG are in a Champions League semi-final this year. And honestly, they're not like massively impressive. They have Joe, the old Man City striker, which is, I don't know how he's still playing football in 2024. This is, this is now quite literally the future. Galaxy is here as well, which is cool. They have Regina to play. They did win the first leg. Can they close out against Regina? They do. 2-1 in the final. They have Roma. Oh my God. This is perfect. It's Lionel Messi in the Champions League final in the final year of his career. Yes, he's playing. He's starting and he is captain. Roma versus PSG. We are definitely going to watch this. And here we go. It doesn't get bigger than this. It's Roma versus PSG. For whatever reason, PSG are wearing their away kit, which is also red. So it might be a bit of a color clash. Let's see how bad it is. It's not great, but we'll make it work, okay? PSG versus Roma. Here we go. I can tell with the shorts. PSG coming forward first into Schuster. Schuster trying to go around the outside. Schuster with the shot and Schuster with the goal. Straight off the bat. PSG take the lead. What a finish from Schuster. Messi in the mud. PSG flying high in 2024. This is before they had all that Qatari oil money, I believe. So, I mean, they've just kind of grinded their way up to the top of European football. And maybe with a little bit of honesty, they're about to win the Champions League. Watrisk skips by two into Rojas, skips by another. It's Rojas with the shot who had saved from Galaxy. Roma challenged the PSG goal for the first time in this game. And here come PSG into Dos Santos with the shot. Good save from Akinfeyev. PSG looking dangerous. Roma having a chance or two themselves. This game is back and forth. Here come Roma though, Costa now. Costa to Messi. It's Lionel Messi. He doesn't get a shot off. Shoots too late. Gets blocked. And that's going to be it. PSG will escape with the ball. And now it's half time. And now Jelovic down the right wing. Cuts inside. Can he slip anyone through? Great ball to Moretti. One more to Schuster. To Dos Santos. Big save from Akinfeyev in net. Great ball into the box from Messi. Roas wins the header. Off the bar. Oh my goodness. That's the closest Roma have gotten. Big chance. Five more minutes for Roma. Do they have time? This may be their last attack. It's Rojas coming forward. Can he play through Messi? He's never won a Champions League. And it's a terrible pass. It's not looking good for Roma. PSG maintain possession. They're going to slow this game down and grind out the results, I think. That is so bad. Messi goes this whole simulation without winning a Champions League in the final year. He gets to the final and still loses anyway. PSG just holding onto the ball, running down the clock and winning the Champions League final. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this video where I took North Korea and made them the greatest footballing nation the planet has ever seen for our beautiful supreme leader. Please check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video.